And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn, milk cows, work all day in the fields, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. God said, I need somebody willing to sit up all night with a newborn cold. Stephen Charles Haynes was born on July 9th, 1961, the son of late Irvy and Barbara Haynes. He and his siblings, Kenneth, Sarah, and Mark, were raised by their parents in Rising Sun, Maryland. They lived across the road from his maternal grandparents, Robert and Harriet Durgan, who ran a small dairy farm on Wilson Road. His paternal grandparents also farmed in nearby Pennsylvania. Stephen and his siblings all helped at the family dairy. Even in his early childhood, Steve had such a love for farming. He was a member of 4-H and even attended 4-H camp. Steve graduated from Rising Sun High School in 1980 where he then pursued farming full-time with his grandparents on their dairy farm. As things in life changed in the early 80s, Steve joined Floyd and Lorraine Allred at their dairy farm in a small community of Clore, Maryland. Steve and Floyd became business partners and worked together for many years until Floyd's retirement in the late 2000s. During their partnership, Steve and Floyd had a number of enterprises including dairy, beef, hogs, corn, soybeans, wheat, barley, hay, and straw. Steve has always known when to change enterprises due to the market, weather, or other conditions to stay sustainable. They transitioned out of dairy farming and into beef in the late 80s. They retrofitted the dairy facility and raised hogs. When the price fell out of hogs, they stopped. In the early days, they did much of the work themselves, from their own planting and combining to chopping corn silage and making hay and straw. Steve learned soil conservation from Floyd, starting with no-till. Floyd was the national leader in no-till farming, starting in 1968, and Steve quickly saw the advantages it brought. With plenty of rocks and boulders, no-till farming fits right in on the Piedmont soils in the northern part of the county. Steve recalls when he and Floyd bought a new loader tracker. He quickly went around the fields and popped out some of the rock outcroppings. Floyd would remark, do you know how many years I farmed around those rocks and you popped them out in minutes? Floyd and Lorraine will always remain dear to Steve and Lindsay's heart for their stewardship of the land, leadership in the community, and personal friendship. Steve is quick to say he wouldn't be where he is today without Floyd and Lorraine Allred. They rented numerous parcels to produce crops and provide pasture for the cows and calves. Being a tenant brings the responsibility to communicate with each individual landowner, from explaining soil sampling nutrient management, liming, to government programs and what participation means for both tenant and landlords. Steve extends his skills beyond his farm and serves on the Farm Service Agency County Committee for Cecil County. He was also an active member and leader in Cecil County Young Farmers for many years. During this time, Steve welcomed his two children into the world, Brooke and Eric. He towed them around from an early age, teaching them the lessons of farm life. From truck rides to checking cows, and delivering hay and straw to Milburn orchards to get donuts and cider, he provided countless memories and lessons that carried forever. With the clock turning to the 20th century, Steve's family grew from he and his two children to include Lindsay and Willis. They joined forces on a small farm at in Calvert where they added goats, 4-H animals, and a large garden. This created more learning and teaching opportunities for all of the family. All the kids were members of the local 4-H clubs and showed animals at the Cecil County Fair. Brooke was most enthusiastic showing dairy heifers and pigs for many years. There were plenty of pet dogs and cats at the farm too. As Steve likes to say, they provide love and entertainment. In some cases, work too. Their miniature blue healer Josie is fearless when it comes to herding cows. All the kids have helped out at the farm, especially with the hay and straw and moving animals. As Floyd retired and Steve ventured out on his own, he was able to make decisions 100% solely on how they would affect him and his family. Steve has always believed it's important to have diversified operations so that they feed into and support each other as markets and weather conditions fluctuate. 
Finding a balance between the cow-calf operation, grains, and hay and straw, at least one enterprise does well, where others might not, and the third may break even. How well each enterprise does can change year to year. By focusing on the return on investment instead of large yields, they stay sustainable. He has tried new crops like tobacco. As labor continues to be a challenge to find, he has used newer equipment like a double rake and disc bind to get jobs done quicker with fewer hands. He works to produce small bales while still requiring minimal handling by selling entire wagon loads with buyers doing the unloading. He learned to use custom helpers with work such as combining and chopping. Lindsay has been a career civil servant with the Natural Resource Conservation Service, serving the farming community in Cecil County for 13 years, and now nationally. A local highlight was when she invited then agency chief Paul Johnson to showcase the great conservation work of Cecil County farmers. It is called Haynes Farm because Steve is self-made and farms wherever he is, from Calvert to Conowingo. With the cell phone age came greater opportunity to stay connected with many people and businesses he interacts with. It takes many characteristics to be a self-made farmer like Steve. He learned in the beginning from his parents and grandparents. His father, Hervey, often worked many jobs to support the family and enlisted the kids' help. With a side business of fixing and building houses, Steve learned plenty of carpentry, plumbing, and electrical skills. He developed a strong work ethic through his family. His mother, Barbara, was a self-made businesswoman who founded Erie Insurance and Rising Sun. All of this made him a workhorse and not a show horse. Having both crop and livestock enterprises requires a large skill set. Steve's fixing skills have served him well, from regular farm equipment maintenance on any color tractor, to restoring old equipment like his corn picker, to fixing the washing machine at home. All of their hard work over the years paid off when they were able to purchase the very farm that he spent years pouring his heart and soul into. They started by purchasing the location of their future home on 10 acres. It may have not been the prettiest, but they both saw the potential it had. Renovating the 1850s farmhouse and barn was a labor of love. Together they have raised many 4-H projects, goats, organic laying hens, and pasture-raised pork. Soon they had purchased the main farm of 50 plus acres and later to add to the more original farm. Persistence is just one of the characteristics that keeps all farmers going. On the hottest day of August 2016, Steve suffered a heart attack. He luckily had a helper that day that called 911 and the first responders quick intervention, including daughter Brooke, got him to the hospital and into emergency surgery. The once strong, independent, self-made farmer was left to watch from his hospital bed in the living room of the farmhouse. As friends and family helped to keep the operation going, he was there to supervise from his cell phone. After a grueling nine months of appointments, being placed on a transplant list, multiple hospital stays, home nursing care, Steve was matched with a donor. Thanks to the donor and the family for the ultimate gift of life, he received a heart in June of 2017. He now shares his heart birthday with his daughter Brooke's June birthday. His persistence continued as he made a full recovery and came back strong. When asking Steve if he had a good day, he is quick to say, every day is a good day, with his signature big smile. Steve and Lindsay will be forever grateful to the friends and family who kept the farm and Steve running during this time. Organ donation saves lives. Currently, Steve farms over 600 acres in Kalora and surrounding areas, consisting of barley, wheat, corn, soybeans, hay, and straw. He runs a 60-head cow-calf pair operation comprised of Angus cows crossed with cemental bulls. On the not-so-busy days, he also helps some of the local Amish families with hauling, and in return, they help him with some of the hay and straw handling when needed. Central to Steve's farming is his love of animals, which started at a young age. He has learned how to keep livestock healthy with balanced diets, clean water, and adequate shelter. He has nursed many critters back to health. He loves the family pets, even if he does also enjoy them as entertainment. Lindsay calls him Dr. Doolittle for how he talks to the animals. 
They often just need to hear his hollering to come running. Steve has developed many animal husbandry skills over the years, which has saved him on many vet calls. He has spent many hours tending to birthing cows, nursing calves, or those that may be sick or injured. The spring calving season brings many sleepless nights, but some of the most rewarding moments as well. Steve continues to install and maintain many conservation practices, such as no-till planting, watering facilities, heavy use areas, and gutters. Currently, Steve has gone beyond traditional practice implementation with rotational grazing, planting pollinator strips, removing invasive plants, pasture weed control, and using diverse cover crop species such as radishes to reduce compaction and promote soil health. Steve has always been an eager student and open to new ideas. He is happy to visit with fellow farmers to discuss new ways of doing things. He has joined Lindsay on trips across the country to learn about production of other crops across different regions. He is always willing to learn. Thanks to having family and friends to maintain the farm, Steve and Lindsay have been able to travel where they enjoy learning about different types of agriculture. They have traveled to see organic farming in Wisconsin, monarch butterfly plantings in Iowa, pineapples in Hawaii, grapes in California, irrigated cotton in Arizona, and coffee in Jamaica, to name a few. After learning so much about farming, Steve is eager to share his knowledge. Steve has taken many young people under his wing. He has passed on his knowledge of how to operate and care for equipment, produce crops, and raise animals. It can be the boy next door or the agronomist from Brazil learning the no-till farm. He is a natural teacher. He is currently training the next generation of Haynes Farm workers, his grandchildren. This past year, we added again to our family welcoming Andrew, Grant, and Cooper. They all love farming, too. All the grandchildren look forward to the good breakfast and time spent with Pop-Up Steve and Nini at the farm. They are actively involved in 4-H. Their granddaughter, Mallory, has taken up her mother's love of showing animals by showing at the Cecil County and the Maryland State Fairs. She even taught cows with Governor Hogan. From having cows to pasture or caring for a coon coon pig, the children are learning from watching and helping. I have personally known Steve and Lindsay since the early 2000s and am fortunate enough to consider them friends. We first met when I was just out of college and rented the old farmhouse from Floyd and Lorraine. Steve and I quickly became friends because we shared the same love for agriculture and bread pudding. It was actually over a bowl of bread pudding at our usual lunch spot spready oak that Steve casually asked me one day if I wanted to raise hogs. Knowing nothing about hogs, I was eager to take on the challenge of learning something new. And with Steve as my teacher, I got the crash course in everything from animal husbandry to ag economics. I was a quick study and it didn't take me long to learn the lesson of when to hold them and when to fold them. So when corn prices doubled and hog prices remained steady, it was time to pursue a different enterprise but I will forever be grateful for the opportunity Steve provided me to try my hand at farming. Farming is not all experience and science. It can be art too. Steve has always appreciated the art and the skills of farming in addition to the fine arts. He is a talented artist in his own right from making hay to visual arts. Cheers to Steve, a self-made hardworking farmer and Lindsay, his biggest supporter. We all look to the next generation to love and care for the land as they have.